Puma Killa Limited. All right. In this episode, I'm going to continue upstairs tearing down the ceiling. Specifically, there are wood beams that are running across on the ceiling and there's one really large wood beam that's at the center of each room. My task today is going to be to tear down those wood beams and completely clear out the ceiling so that it's completely open. Join me on my adventure to renovate an old house in Japan. I love you, my little friend. My little friend! This I bought because I needed like a wedge, something to pull nails, just because sometimes that's too long. I'm just gonna use a basic flathead to take out uh, screws. Of course, my trusty mask. This is so valuable because I usually wear eye protection, but when you have the full mask protection, it's just so much better. I don't know how many times a wood plank or something came flying down and boom, right in the nose, right in the mouth. This has saved my face so many times. I just kind of just take the hit and keep going. I'm gonna leave him out because he doesn't actually have any sort of nail pulling capacity in its back part there. So you're out, I need you. Jesus. I'm going to start tearing down these beams. The main heavy beams in the middle of the room are very heavy and very thick. It's going to be a little bit difficult pulling these down by myself but it needs to be done. They have absolutely no structural value to the house other than to suspend the ceiling and give support to the ceiling in the center of the room. But because there is no ceiling we don't need these beams anymore. As I said before I'm going to try to salvage some of these other beams as well and try to use them somewhere else in the house. Even after just taking a few things off of the ceiling, it's kind of created a bit of a debris mess again. And that's going to be one more cleanup. The beams were attached to the ceiling by some very heavy duty nails. It seemed like they were some sort of railroad grade nails because they were just really thick iron nails that were rusted into the wood. Even with a real heavy swing of the crowbar, it was still difficult to pull them out. And eventually, with a little bit of extra force, they were able to come off. But in the end, it was still no easy task. I'm going to take care of that, that beam there. I'm going to try to cut it into pieces and then take it down slowly because it looks rather heavy i think well it's definitely nailed on to this beam pretty well so i think if i saw this part first i have no idea There's a nail actually holding that, so that'll be a little bit more complicated. Well, that's that. Whew. That thing was tough. Might as well take this off. Few other things die. Okay. So leave that up there, then I'm gonna forget where I left it and it's gonna be 
up there forever. All right, how's that? The poles were mounted all the way across and the poles were really sturdy, so really they were only mounted with nails on one end and the other end. But it was easy just to kind of just pry them up and pull them down. The only really issue that I had was the main pole that was at the center of the room. These poles were very thick, heavy poles. And being one person going up a ladder and cutting that beam meant that this whole thing was going to come crashing down. So I really had to think and be creative as to how I was going to pull them down. One of the main things that I decided to do was to actually save those beams, the small beams that were going across. What I noticed was that those beams were quite nice and they were stained and sanded and had just a really nice look to them. And what I had imagined in my head was just cutting across and then tearing everything down. But when I realized just how nice they were and they were actually really good length, they were pretty long uh, beams. And so then I decided, hey, why not? Let's uh, save these and instead of creating so much trash, I could actually use these somewhere else. And in future episodes, I will kind of show you some of the creative ways that I actually decided to use these beams. It just really wasn't an easy task when you first look at it, you think it's going to be a simple demolition, but in the end, nothing ever really wants to let go. When you really think that you can just pry something off, it just never seems to go your way. I've pretty much taken all the boards off. They were just uh, held on there by just a couple nails here, if you can look at it on the end, bumping them off. Those rails here were also where the studs are, or those pieces of wood, they were holding on to those rails as well. So by me cutting them, it just kind of gave me a little bit more leverage. Now the only thing that remains is just those planks of wood. Uh, this one here, that one is going to just come off, so I, I kind of just lifted it and it it just kind of lifted up. So it has a nail, I think, wedged sideways. Pull that nail out and that should slide out. So that nail was just wedged in there and the, the pole was just here and it was just holding it up. So I just bent it over and boom, just like that. Comes right off. I believe that's just laying on top. I'm gonna just try to lift it all and bring it down. See if it's too heavy for me to carry. It makes a huge difference. You know, you just have these little beams here they're so narrow, but uh, once you remove them, it just kind of really opens up the space. And I can see a whole lot more of the ceiling now and uh, a whole lot more beehives. So let's take that beam off and let's clean this up and let's see how it looks. So that's all the pieces of wood taken off. It definitely made a lot bigger debris field again. Just tearing down these ceilings is just creating so much trash. It's time for another cleanup. If we pan down slowly, what a big difference. It's huge. You can really see how open it is. It looks fantastic, I think. So nice, so open. If we go in here, you can see how big of a difference it makes to clean those up. Quite happy. There's all the wood panels from the ceiling. I'm going to keep these and I'm going to try to find another use for them. They're actually really nice. I really like them, so um, I have a couple ideas. That's the rubble from the last couple of rooms. I uh, cut it up and put it into little pieces so that I can bag it up. And here is the last room. So you can just see how wide open that space is.
this part down here is that's the hallway leading up to the front of the house. And the hallway roof is kind of made up of these like beams of wood. So it actually looks a little bit more complicated to tear down. It looks like some sort of framework and then they nailed into it for the ceiling. Another super interesting thing is that. Oh my God. Can you see that? Let me zoom in on that. Oh my God. That is a beehive. Now, I haven't seen any bees coming in and out ever since I opened up this place and I've been doing a lot of hammering and smashing. So the main assumption is there is nothing in there and it's super, super old. Let's hope. I'm not too sure about these things, but what's interesting about it is that they actually damage the ceiling. And on the other side, I'll show you, uh, there's some damage and it's like, what in the hell is that? It looks like something was carving through the actual ceiling. And so you see where it touches there. I'll go ahead and show you actually. Step down. You can see that the hive was actually maybe coming in and out of there, but uh, yeah, they chewed right through. Crazy. Seriously, that is going to be one disgusting cleanup. The next portion is gonna be the actual bedroom. I haven't quite decided what I'm going to do with the hallway and the stairway. I'm not sure if I'm actually going to tear it down or just leave it closed up like that. I mean, obviously the cool thing would be is to come up the stairs and then as you're coming up, you look up and you could see the ceiling. I mean, that's kind of cool. Or it's like, oh, there's ceiling and then surprise, there's an open ceiling up here. I haven't quite figured it out yet. but. Obviously, that is a lot of work to tear all that down. Seriously, I want to poke at this thing. I am so curious. And yeah, what I'm going to do is... Got my uh, murder, murder hornet stuff. We're going to get that ready. So we're going to put that right there for now. You stay right there. We're going to... Just a little jab. I'm curious. I will be the guy who stirred the harness nuts. Nothing. Ugh. Oh, thank God that thing is super old. And... Yeah. There's the inside. Sorry, I can't make a better cleaner video than that, but she's old, but really nice mud work. I gotta hand it to those bees. Uh, they did some nice mudding there. So good job, bees. So I was in the home improvement center just a moment ago. I decided to buy more bee killer spray. My neighbor came in. Uh, she's the lady that lives in front of me. I was uh, at the B section, you know, it's kind of end cap. She's like, oh, do you have, do you have a B problem? And I'm like, have you been outside? There's nothing but bees. Like, we don't, the whole village has a B problem. So, not a B problem, it's a B pandemic. I mean, they could film a, a movie of freaking catastrophe movie about killer bees in our village. There's so many bees. And I was like, yeah, you have a bee problem too. Have you stepped outside? Everybody has a bee problem. Thanks for watching this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. Next episode, actually, I'm very excited because I received the Sugiban, which is going to be the boards that I'm going to use to refinish the outside of the house. What's interesting is this Sugiban is not the typical type of uh, wood finish that you would find maybe in a Western country. So I'm really excited to really get started on that project. Some of the exterior of the house does have some damage to the siding as well as the gutter system. So I'm really looking forward to updating those areas and to really make the house on the outside look good. 
Of course, it's not something that, again, is very necessary at this moment, but because I decided if I'm going to refinish some of the walls in the interior, I don't want some of that uh, weather system to actually affect the walls. Some of the damage that I saw inside the house uh, on the walls was because that exterior was damaged. And because the walls are actually made of sand and rocks and hay, then uh, any sort of weather that's going to penetrate the outside is going to affect the inside. So I hope you keep watching and I look forward to showing the new episode and stay tuned. Thanks again.